problem we're going to look at uh, we're going to use structural induction to show that l of t where l of t l of t is the function that gives a number of leaf nodes number of leaf nodes of a full binary tree t and this expression l of t is is expressed as one more one more than whatever i of t is where i of t is uh, is the number of internal nodes of a tree t okay now because we're using structural induction and structural induction is basically is a variation on strong induction so what you're going to do is we're first going to define a proposition and uh, the proposition p of n and in this case p of t is the proposition is the statement is the is the statement is the statement that l of t l of t is one more than i of t okay now what you're going to do is at first going to solve for the bases and the bases over here is i'm going to look at what is the smallest structure that i can create for which this expression needs to be true now the question is that i'm looking for a full binary tree t and uh, what i do know is that a full binary tree t the smallest tree that i can create from the from the from the recursive definition of my full binary tree t is that a tree that just contains a root node a tree that just contains a root node is a full binary tree because it contains it contains zero children okay and because it contains it contains zero children what i can see is that for this tree for this tree out here the number of leaf nodes the number of leaf nodes happen to be happen to be one and the number of internal nodes happen to be zero and again the definition the definition over here is that the internal nodes are nodes that have children so these are nodes that do have children so these are nodes that do have do have children and the leaf nodes are nodes that do not have children so these are do not do not have children and a full binary tree is a, is a tree that basically has either zero or exactly two children so given this tree that just has one node which is the leaf node i can see that the basis the basis is correct because l the number of leaf nodes happen to be one the number of internal nodes happen to be zero and the expression that l of t l of t equals to one plus i of t i of t is actually correct so this is one and i of t is zero so everything's okay with the basis now let's look at uh, let's look at the inductive hypothesis so in the inductive hypothesis in the inductive hypothesis and i just need to get my just need to get this a little bigger so i'm just gonna make it 4.6 maybe so with the inductive hypothesis what i'm going to claim is that let's assume there's some tree out there p of t1 okay i'm just going to assume that uh, there's some tree t1 out there for which for which the assumption uh, for which the proposition p of t is a statement that l of t equals to 1 plus i of t is true so we're going to assume p of t p of t1 is true and we're going to assume that for some p of t2 is also true okay everything in orange here is my assumption is my assumption what is something that i'm assuming to be true so here is my here is my assumption now what I'm going to do with this assumption is I'm going to show you I'm going to show you that if you assume that t that some tree t that happens to be the union of t1 and t2 okay so I take a, a subtree t1 and I take a subtree t2 and I connect them in such a way that I can create a bigger tree t what I want to show you now is that p of t p of t is also true I want to show you this is also true and keep in mind when i talk about p of t i'm always referring to my proposition that i've created here here is my proposition p of t so when i say p of t1 i just go into this proposition i replace t with t1 and when i talk, when I talk about uh, p of t2 i go back to my proposition and replace t with t2 and and the statement and the statement over here that l of t equals to one plus l of t is going to be is going to be true okay so again what it really means is that uh just need to make it let's make it 3.5 okay so p of t1 is true what it really means is uh, what it really means is that l 
L of t1, L of t1 is equal to 1 plus i of t1. And we're going to assume this is true. And when I say p of t2 is true, what it really means is that L of t2 equals to 1 plus i of t2 is true. And what I want to show you in yellow is that p of t is also true, which means that what I really want to show you is that p of t is 1 plus i of i of t. Okay, so how do I show you? How do I show you everything in this yellow box is actually true? But what I can do is, what I can do is, I can start with the expression. I can start with this expression. This is, this is L of t. Okay, so I can start with this expression that the leaf nodes, that the leaf nodes of this tree t, of this tree t, is going to be, is going to be equal to the leaf nodes of t1 plus the leaf nodes of t2. Now what does this mean? How does this, how does this actually, like, uh, how can I, how can I, how can I show you this is actually true here? So what you're going to do is you're just going to do a simple picture here. So if I've got t1, okay, so here is t1. Okay, this is t1. And uh, let's say I've got some tree t2 over here. Okay, this is t2. The leaf nodes over here for t1 is, is this piece in orange, that in orange there, this node in orange, and this node in orange here. And the leaf node for this green tree is these two nodes in orange, because again, as per definition for the leaf nodes, these are nodes that do not have children, and I can see all these four blue nodes over here do not have children, so these are classified as a leaf node, and these two green nodes over here do not have children, so they're classified as leaf nodes over here. Okay, now if I create a tree T, so I choose some root node in pink here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this, I'm going to connect this, I'm going to connect this pink node with the root of the blue node. I'm going to connect the pink node with the node, with the, with the root node of my T2. And what I've created now is a, is a tree T, is this tree T, which happens to be the union of T1 and T2. So this entire tree, this entire tree over here, this entire tree in the box, in this box over here, is now T. Now question is how many leaf nodes does the tree T have? The number of leaf nodes of the tree T still happens to be everything that I've highlighted in orange, which happens to be the sum of T2, the sum of the leaf nodes of T2, plus the sum of the leaf nodes of T1, which is, which is this expression over here, okay? Now, how many, how many internal nodes do I have here? So the tree T, the tree T, has everything that I'm going to highlight in yellow as my internal nodes. So that's one there. This is two, three. So it has three internal nodes that are coming from the blue tree, which is T1. And it has one of these internal nodes that's coming from the tree in green. And in addition, there is one internal node over here, which is a root of T. So the internal nodes, the internal nodes of the tree T is equal to, is equal to the internal nodes of T1 which is this three over here, plus the internal nodes of T2, which is just one over here, plus, plus one, which is the count, to account for this root node. So this node over here, this node over here, this node over here, this one over here, and this one over here, are all the internal nodes of the tree T. Okay, so these are some of the properties that I know are correct. The leaf nodes and I of T. Now what I want to show you is everything in this box, which is L of t is equal to 1 plus i of t. Now because my expression over here involves L of t, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this box here. So I'm just going to write this box again, which is L of t equals to L of t1 plus L of t2. Okay, now I know these assumptions in orange are true. And because these assumptions are orange are true, I'm going to use them. I'm going to use them in my expression that I've highlighted in pink. So what I'm going to do now is L of t is equal to, I'm going to break up L of t1 into this piece here. Because I'm assuming, I'm assuming that it's correct, that it's true. So this is going to be 1 plus i of t1. And I'm going to break up L of t2 as this assumption over here, which is 1 plus i of t2. Now, L of t 
is equal to, I'm going to make use of this piece in yellow, which says the I of t is equal to I of t1 plus I of t2 plus 1, which means everything over here, everything over here can be, can be replaced, can be replaced, which is I of t1 plus 1 plus I of t2 as I of t. Let me make this 1 plus I of t. And now, this piece in pink is completely identical to this piece in pink here. Yeah. So what I've done here is using structural induction, where I assumed, where I assumed this fact to be true, and I assumed this fact to be true, where T1 and T2 are some smaller subtrees, where T1 and T2 are some smaller subtrees. When I concatenate them, when I join them, I can create a bigger tree T, and then I showed you that this is also true. It's also true for the, the proposition is also true for this bigger tree, for this bigger tree T by making use of assumptions and making use of these two facts where L of T and I of T are equal to the following expressions and we consume those expressions, consume those expressions and the facts to show you that this proposition which is P of T is also true.